tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. What's going on, After Buzzers? Welcome to How to Be a Host, formerly known as Host Highlights. I'm your host, Olivia Gabri, and today I am highlighting the poet saint himself, Lem Gonzalez. Yay! What's up, everybody? So, you've been an After Buzzer now for four years, you said? So over four years, yeah. How did you first get introduced to the hosting world? Um, it's actually a really cool story. So, um, you know, I moved to LA. And my primary objective was to get into radio TV hosting, but mm -hmm. had zero experience, didn't really know how to navigate. And I ended up going to a function with my cousin, uh, and I met a girl named Spicy Mari, who uh, was a host here at After Buzz. Mm -hmm. And she was kind of telling me kind of the stuff she did. I said, oh, that would be really cool. I'd love to do that. She says, well, if I hear anything about it, I'll, you know, I'll let you know. And like a week later, um, she was doing a show, Masters of Sex, they were covering. I actually uh, ended up doing that after show you? after, yeah, but go on. Okay. And so um, they needed a fill-in. They wanted a guy. Yeah. Because uh, they had all women on the panel. So they said, we'll try you out and see, you know, they were going to try someone else as well the following week. So I came in, and I guess I did a good job because they're like, we don't even want to try the other person. Ooh. <laughs> so, and I was just, I mean, it was really cool because I had no experience yeah. uh, as far as, you know, this is concerned. And then, you know, did that show, finished it out. It kind of came in mid-season. Um, so finished the show out. And then the sky was the limit. You know, I had the opportunity uh, to do other shows and then just kind of branched off from there and then found my niche mm -hmm. as far as shows that I thought, you know, fit me and my personality and then kind of honed in and went from there. So tell me a little bit about the niche you speak of. Do you feel like it's important to sort of narrow yourself down, or why did you decide to do that? Absolutely, because I think, um, you know, when I first got here, obviously I just wanted to do all the shows, mm -hmm. you know, because I was trying to get the experience. But, you know, After Buzz sets itself as that we're super fans as hosts. Mm -hmm. And so I think if you're doing a show or hosting a show that you're not necessarily, you know, really, really enjoy a lot, it's going to come across, you know, and I ended up doing shows that I didn't really care for, and it came across, you mm -hmm. know, uh, on video. And when I was doing the show, I wasn't excited about it, so I'm not going to give that. Yeah. And so I found out, basically, that I really, really liked to cover reality shows for a number of reasons. Number one, sometimes they're really ratchet, and that's kind of fun <laughs> to, to talk about that. But also, too, um, I found out as I progressed that when you have guests on your show, mm -hmm. um, it, it boosts your ratings, you know, and, 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 and your viewership. And so I found out with reality shows, it was a lot easier to get guests because, you know, they're trying to get on, too. That's yeah. why a lot of times they're on a reality show. So I kind of honed in and started finding reality shows that I watched already, mm -hmm. and I said, well, I'll just cover them. And that's kind of how that happened. So how do you go about booking guests? Uh, secret, you know. It's like a hard process, uh, I feel. You know, um, I think there's multiple ways. Um, I uh, I think number one, probably the, the best way is to get in really good with the network. Okay. So, like, for instance, MTV. I've covered several reality shows at MTV. Um, my favorite being Are You the One, which I've covered um, pretty much from season two to the last season, which was season six. Mm -hmm. So in the process of that, I was able to connect with the publicist for MTV that covered that show, and what by doing that, they then had a relationship with me and felt comfortable sending me guests. Okay. Uh, whereas maybe if you know someone wasn't um, you know around them or, or had that relationship, they probably wouldn't do that. So it'd be harder to get the guest. So once I developed that relationship, that started happening, and then it kind of blossomed into, okay, well, we want you to cover other shows. Oh. And then they started sending me, like, you know, little gifts on Christmas. Yeah. Gifts? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then I, they sent me, like, I haven't used it yet, but anyway, we're not going to talk about that, my little gifts. <laughs> but, um, uh, um, and then they invited me to their reunion after shows. And so... Right, and so that's um, that was really cool, and I've, and I've been to a couple of reunion mm -hmm. after shows, um, and just been able to, um, you know, really, and then you kind of meet, you know, some of the people, the guests that you haven't had on the show, and you kind of meet the host of the show, and mm -hmm. it's just really, I mean, it's really getting into that. I think right. that's probably the easiest way. I mean, there's other ways, you know, you can go on Twitter and, and try to, you know, book the guests there. And I've done that before, and that's worked. Yeah. Um, I've somehow gotten their emails uh, from a publicist or someone that maybe worked on the show, and I've done that. So there's num uh, a numerous amount of ways, but 
I feel like if you get in good with the network, mm -hmm. I think that's the best way. So, and I feel like Hollywood itself is just totally relationship based. Absolutely. And that seems Absolutely. like how you got to where you're at now as far as booking guests. But mm -hmm. do you have any specific tips on how to even start up a relationship like that? Like, would you just reach out to them or it just sort of happens? Um, I think it's, it's a little bit of both. Yeah. Um, how I got the relationship with MTV was I was reaching out to a guest mm -hmm. through Twitter. Okay. Um, and that person, that particular uh, person on the show said, hey, I would love to do this show, but can you hit up the uh, the person that is the publicist for oh, the show? Oh, okay. And so I said, absolutely. So I did that, introduced myself, who I was, um, you know, very formally, and said, this is what we're about. And so once I kind of stayed that president's um, and after Buzz TV is really well known in the industry, which is helpful. Yeah. You know, we really have a good representation, uh, a reputation, excuse me, here. And so with that, coupled with what I, information I gave her, mm -hmm. she said, okay, no problem. I'll definitely send them over. And if you need any other guests, then please let me know. And that's how that relationship started. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so now Are You The One is a huge after show here. I mean, yes. I've seen episodes where we have the whole couch filled with yes. the entire yes. freaking cast in yes. studio. So, and and I realized that um, you, your after show was featured on their reunion episode, no? Mm -hmm. How did that happen? That's crazy. Uh, so it was basically we were doing one of our after shows and we had three people on the couch. Mm -hmm. And it was an episode where one of the cast members was talking about something that happened in that episode. But behind the scenes that we didn't know is that there was some beef, so to speak, you know, they got these drama going on <laughs> with cast members that was currently going on. And so when she said what she said, it kind of ignited a spark. Because, you know, these, these shows are taped months yes. ago. And so, but because of what was currently going on, and she was talking about the episode, it ignited this kind of spark and beef. And so what happened was all the cast basically started kind of tweeting each other and, and calling each other. And then we had the guest after the after show in the back, and they were calling, you know. And so it created this big, you know, big hysteria. And so when they did the reunion and, you know, they covered different things that happened mm -hmm. throughout the season, um, that ended up being a highlight of what happened because it caused so much controversy. And so what they did was they used a clip from what she was saying from our after show and then showed it on the after show oh, on MTV. Wow. So that was really cool. That's so sick. Yeah. So the cast of the show, actually, if they're not in studio, they're watching your after show as well? Absolutely. With Are You The One, they all watch the after show. They Ooh. all love to watch the after show. And I've had, uh, you know, and all the seasons. Um, mm -hmm. I've had other shows where they watch the after show, but specifically Are You The One? Because, you know, it's very, uh, it carries over. You know, yeah. a lot of these people, if they're on season three, season four, they know a lot of the people from season three. Mm -hmm. So they know and they say, hey, you got to watch this. Hey, you got to be on the show. Mm -hmm. So it becomes easier and easier every season because they know that this is the plug. Yeah, after and you're Buzz building TV. the exactly. reputation. Exactly. That's that's what it's about. Yeah. So what's different about reality and the other shows that we do here, obviously, is that these are actual people. Mm -hmm. They're not playing characters, right. and they have actual real-life drama. Yes. So when you're on a panel and you're discussing these people's personalities and their actions, how do you sort of navigate it? Because then you have to see them in person, right. and it's like, well, if I just talk crap about you, now I have to face you. How do you deal with something like that? Is you, it weird? Uh, you know, it's funny because it happens all the time. Because, you know, when we're doing these shows, we have our opinions. Mm -hmm. You know, we're very opinion-based about things that happen. Uh, and a lot of times we don't really know the true story, the mm -hmm. whole story, I should say. And so a lot of times when we've maybe talked crap about somebody <laughs> and then we get them in the studio, you know, we'll talk about it. We'll mm -hmm. be like, yo, okay, look, this is the deal. I talked really bad about you. Why don't you tell me your side? Because okay. they don't get the opportunity to do that on the show. We're watching the show. But when they come on the after show, they and that's why a lot of times they love, because let's say they're painted as a villain on their show mm -hmm. um, that they're, they're doing, they end up basically being able to tell their story. Like, this is how it really happened. It really wasn't that bad. Yeah. I was edited to be this person. And so they end up coming on, and we get the real story, and then we're like, okay, cool, you know? Sometimes they're still terrible people. Really? But, <laughs> has there ever been a, has anyone ever hit you up after been like, hey, why did you say about this about me, this, that, and the other? Um, we haven't had that. I haven't had that personally per se, but we have had people who 
we've had to cut off yeah. while they were doing an interview because oh, they were being really nasty to everyone else. We did a reunion for After Buzz, or for After, uh, Are You the One, excuse me, a couple of seasons ago, and we basically had a ton of people in the studio. We did two hours, and we had people on Skype, and one of the cast members on Skype uh, was just kind of going in on the cast and talking really bad about them, and it just came really uncomfortable, so we kind of just cut it short. Ooh. And so, yes, and they were painted off as being a villain on the show, so that was an example of where they were a villain on the show and in real, and life. In real life and so <laughs> it happens oh man so uh, outside of uh the after Buzz studio you mm -hmm. also do a couple other things including spoken word poetry yeah? yes but that came before hosting oh yeah i've been doing that oh gosh for years i've been performing probably since uh 2004 mm -hmm. um and uh been touring i've, I've traveled around the world you know performing. really yeah and so it's been a, a passion of mine. I've competed. I've been in the competition circuit. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I've recently actually signed uh, to an agency to, wow. to book colleges. And so come the fall semester, I'll start to do colleges uh, all around the country. And so, and the sky's the limit. You know, I actually mm -hmm. just uh, submitted my information uh, to a promoter that um, has shows in Dubai. And for so, real? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that could be a possible destination. That's for so it. awesome. Yeah. And I know, I mean, it's different from hosting, but I feel like you're on stage, you're in mm -hmm. front of people, you're behind a mic. Do you ever feel like skills from one or the other sort of come in handy sometimes? Yeah. I mean, I think the presence mm -hmm. of, of being, like performing on stage, I think that definitely helped me in hosting because, number one, it helps me to be comfortable in front of a microphone. Yes. Um, also, it gives me a sense of stage presence, even though we're behind a desk and we're not performing when we're hosting. And a lot of times we are because we have to make sure we care on a conversation. Mm -hmm. We have to navigate. There's a lot of things that we do uh, to make sure that we have a good show. And I feel like a lot of that I learned from performing and, and doing featured shows and, and even hosting. I, I hosted poetry events, so yeah. that helped as well um, in, in coming across on this end and, and hosting these after shows. Oh. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Yeah, I feel like it's it's funny how you just get into one thing and it pushes you into the next mm -hmm. and the next, and that's mm -hmm. especially the game here in Hollywood. Sure. And you were recently telling me as well that you're getting more into commercial acting, too. Yeah, I actually just took a, a class uh -huh. um, at the beginning of the year in January, and so I took a, a four-week class, and so after that class, they kind of sent a video out. And so I got hit up by a couple of agencies, and so Ooh. actually have a meeting tomorrow, to be exact. And so I'm really excited, and so I hope to uh, to sign with someone yeah. here soon. And then that'll be the next journey, is doing commercials and kind of okay. seeing what that looks like. So it's just like another... You know, you're in front of the camera just doing something else. Exactly. And you took these classes. I know that you can take classes for basically anything here, whether mm -hmm. it's hosting, whatever, whatever. Do you feel like it really contributed to your growth? Like, what are some things that you would pick up in a class that you wouldn't normally by just getting out there and oh, doing Oh, well, with it? the commercial acting, I mean, that's definitely a new field for me, yeah. you know, when we talk about acting. And obviously, it's different than theater acting with people yeah. that actually do it and they do movies and television shows. This would be strictly for commercials, so it's a little different. Mm -hmm. But it def definitely, in taking the class, there's a lot of things I wouldn't know, like in going to an audition, where do you sign in, and your place mark, and things oh, like that. Oh, simple things like Very that. Very simple things like that. I had no idea mm -hmm. because I'd never done it before. So it was very instrumental in doing that. And also, you know, you do scenes, so you learn how to act with, you know, by yourself, with a partner, with uh -huh. multiple people people which is customary in commercials and so yeah it was extremely helpful I mean also I did it because I want to know is this something I want to do yeah you know if I took the class and it was like I don't want to do it then it's like okay moving on now do you feel like having experience as a host almost gave you a leg up in that way or are they completely different no it's funny because it did I, I remember the first scene I did the instructor, you know, I did the scene, mm -hmm. and I was fairly comfortable. Um, again, you have a camera in front of you, and you're doing the scene. Yeah. And so he, afterwards, he says, stand up. He thought I was a stand-up comedian oh. um, because I was so comfortable in front of the camera um, and doing what I was doing. And I said, no, I'm not. I said, but I am a host, mm -hmm. and I've done that for, you know, several years. And so I think that's where that comes from. So, yeah, he noticed it right away. Did you surprise yourself in a way almost? A little bit. I mean, I feel like, you know. You, you know, got you got it now. You got, got it going some stuff, on. You know, you know, you know. 
but no, I mean, I think I think I'm always trying to push myself. Yeah. You know, um, I feel like being here um, in a city like LA, you know, it's you, you know people are always on their grind. Yes. They're always um, trying to get a leg up on things because it's a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. And so my thing is, if there's something I feel like I can do, the opportunity is there. I'm gonna see if I can do it. Yeah. You know, and if I can't, then oh well. But if I push myself and I find out that it's something that I can do, then cool. That's something else to to mm -hmm. add to the belt. And you gotta gotta stay sharp. Exactly. So here at After Buzz, I know you uh, you have a show coming up. It's another reality MTV show, yeah. Yes. What show Super is that? Super excited. X on the Beach. Yes. X on the Beach. Yes. They've had uh, several adaptations um, of, uh, on the UK uh -huh. side, and so matter of fact. Um, for this last, I'm a big fan of MTV's The Challenge as well. Okay. And they had some of the cast members from uh, the UK version uh, of it on The Challenge, mm -hmm. this current season of The Challenge that's airing right now. So they decided to bring it to the US. So they're going to have, um, of course, you know, previous MTV people that been on The Challenge. Uh, Are You the One? They're even cross going over into other reality shows. Oh. I think The Bachelorette. Uh, people from there, uh, Big Brother. Yeah. So there, it's it's this cross culmination of, of reality, you mm -hmm. know, reality people, and uh, it's a great premise to the show. Um, I'm really excited because I know there's going to be some ratchetness. There's going to be <laughs> some heartache. Oh, there's going to sure. be, you know, probably some fight. I mean, the things that we like in these shows. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, um, a lot of the same cast that I've had in previous Are You The One and, and that I've done with MTV's The Challenge are going to be in the show, so it'll be exciting mm -hmm. to have them back on and, and on that and get their take on that as oh, well. Oh, so this is right in your lane. Super in my lane. Yeah, and when does that start up? Uh, April 19th. April Just found 19th. out today, actually. Uh, right. April 19th. It's going to be on Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern. So, yeah. So we'll mark it on our calendars. Yes, please do. Please All right, do. well, thank you for joining me tonight. I'm so yeah. glad I got to learn a little bit more about you as a host, yeah. and I've learned so much about this whole like reality thing. Yeah. I feel like I have to get on some After Buzz reality shows. Me too. Um, but again, thank you guys for tuning in. I'll catch you next week, Thursdays at 9 p.m. I'm your host, Olivia Gabri. You can hit me up at the real underscore O underscore G. And where can everybody find you at? Uh, you can find me everywhere at The Poet Saint all day, every day. All right. Thanks, guys. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later.